Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley and I am here with Brian McGowan. We just heard a great message from Rob Morris of Love 146 and he educated us today a little bit about what they do to fight human trafficking. And I'm here with Brian because Rob had to get on a plane and head back before the weather got bad, but we are lucky that our own Brian McGowan sits on the board for Love 146. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. And thank, thank you for being here to answer some of our um, questions today. You know, Rob spoke a lot about their work all over the world, mm -hmm. the survivor homes. Um, we heard a great story from a survivor in the Philippines. Um, can you speak a little more specifically about what Love 146 is doing here in the Houston area? Yeah. So about two years ago, uh, when FaithBridge started a Love 146 task force, was, was a bunch of Faith Bridgers say, we want to do something. And so we gathered uh, once a month as a task force, as a small group, and we'd be praying and planning and trying to bring awareness. And uh, it was just right about then, there was this momentum here in Houston, and FaithBridge was able to be the catalyst uh, to give the initial gift to 1146 to start a Houston office. And so since that office has been here, they're in their second full year mm -hmm. uh, this year, um, they have actually done prevention education, which is going into the different schools, HISD, Spring Branch, a, a number of schools, uh, and training um, counselors and teachers and high school students even about what human trafficking looks like, uh, because it's the whole idea to stop it before it happens. And a lot of times it's happening um, to girls, uh, especially who they don't even know that they're being trafficked. They don't even know um, that they're in the midst of being coerced or um, doing something that they don't have to do. Uh, and so the numbers, even in Houston, they've trained more people in prevention education in Houston than they have even around the U.S. Um, through uh, the Houston office. And so that's their main focus right now. Uh, also bringing awareness, raising support for Love 146. Uh, they just um, started two new programs. One, which is they call the Hotel Motel um, uh, program, which they're sending um, people to go and train the owners oh, and the managers it. of mm -hmm. hotels and motels to recognize it when it's happening because there's an ordinance in Houston that it's against the law. Uh, to rent rooms for that purpose. And so um, that's one thing that they're, they're just launching now. Uh, and then another thing is that they uh, are working with local officials, um, the judges and the different uh, law enforcement for girls that are rescued from um, human trafficking. Uh, they are providing some intervention. Specifically, the girls usually would go to some sort of foster care or group home, uh, but they have nothing. And so they're providing these backpacks that were designed by survivors for what you would need in the first 24, 48, 72 hours after you're rescued. So it has things simple like a cell phone, a teddy bear, um, uh, art, like books to just be able to express themselves. And so that's what they're doing here in Houston. Uh, and thanks to, to FaithBridge uh, for being a catalyst and, and, and making a lot of that happen. You know, he talked today about the the, the gut wrench, like the yeah, compassion, exactly. like the moment that uh, like moves you into action. What what was it for you? Yeah. Like, when did you move, get yeah. so involved with Love Movement? What moved you? Yeah, so for us, I'd gone to a conference uh, in Dallas and heard some speakers about it. I had no idea that it was going on. Told Jenny about it. Um, and it was at that moment that we, we still didn't fully understand it. Um, and it was on a vacation of ours that we were sitting there like in the beautiful California coast and reading about it. And it was just this weird juxtaposition of we're here, safe, warm, enjoying each other's company. And yet we're reading about the, the, the tragedies and mm -hmm. just the, the craziness of the world that's happening. And so it was in that moment we knew that our, uh, we had been praying about what our um, family's mission would be. And we were, I think we were kind of hoping it would be a safer, cleaner, nicer uh, mission. Uh, but we knew in that moment that the Lord was calling the McGowan family um, to use our um, scope of influence in the world and, and to also bring up our kids to know that this wasn't right and that we needed to do everything that we could in our power um, to bring awareness and hope. Um, and I'll tell you what, every day, including today when I hear Rob's message, that gut wrench mm. is still there. Uh, and I've been to Thailand and I've seen it and it, 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 it 
I, it's one of these deep, dark industries um, that when you are going to be in a ministry that's fighting it, you've got to really hold on to the Word of God that brings you hope, and you wake up every morning that His mercies are new every morning, and that only in His power are, are we going to see true freedom. Hmm. So. So as a faith bridger who's sitting there feeling that feeling today and thinking we have to do something, I want to do something, how, how do I go about yeah. getting involved? Like, how uh, can It's we a help? great question and one I get asked all the time. I mean, we started a task force. It ran for about two years. We're hoping to relaunch a task force. So hopefully if you were here at church today, you signed up. If not, you can go to our website um, and sign up and we're hopefully going to relaunch that. Uh, also, I think Jason Archmont is just a great example. Mm -hmm is a man who had a passion and some giftings to do certain things, and he just said, I'm gonna leverage that to fight human trafficking. And so mm -hmm. um, I think that's where, what all of us should do. Number one is to figure out how did God gift us and how can I use that to fight human trafficking? So if you're an attorney, maybe you look into uh, legally, how can you help? If you're a counselor, uh, connect with Love and 46 and see if you, they can use you in, in that capacity. I think sometimes we all wanna be the experts yeah. to really interact with survivors, but only a very small few are actually have the expertise and the training to work with survivors of sex trafficking. And so uh, I think for us, I'm gonna call it normal people who don't have that expertise in, in training, we just have to use what God, God gifted us to do. Um, and so get part of the task force here. Um, help raise support and money. I mean, like Rob said, monthly support for, um, organizations of human trafficking is sort of the lifeblood of how they can sustain. And there are many corporate organizations, even individuals who are totally against this. They don't mm -hmm. want it to happen, but they're also scared to support it and be part of it because they feel like maybe they'll be linked in with it and, and it gets confusing and messy. And it's, a um, it's a dark, it's a dark, dark industry. And so um, I would say just jump in, you know, feet first, figure out where your giftings are and how you can be part of it. And uh, go to our website, go to loveand46.org to get more information about it too. Great. And so lastly, we saw a video today of a survivor's testimony mm -hmm. in her own words of the story. It was very powerful. Yeah. Um, if you've watched this online and weren't able to join us today, you will not be able to see that video. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about yeah. why? So in uh, an industry like child sex trafficking, there is extreme confidentiality that goes along with that. Uh, and the story that was shown in church today was a story of a survivor who was able to actually tell her own story um, which is, was a huge moment for the whole organization, but also for her protection, for the protection mm -hmm. organization, since she was actually in the video, her face, her story. Um, they, Love on 46 made a promise to her that it would not be um, recorded and put up permanently anywhere. And so they, they can show it in live venues, but, but not anywhere online um, permanently to protect her, to protect the organization. Um, but you can go to loveon46.org and they have a plethora of videos that will get the same message across mm -hmm. about different survivors' stories. Um, just won't have Remy's face in there. So Great. you can go online and see those videos. All right, thank you so much and thank you for being here with us. Thank you. thank you for joining us for Postscript. Join us back here next week as we continue our series on salt and light. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.